Well, we're going to go there right now. We didn't look there yet. There's two things going on. Right here, we see the word software notch filter. Okay? If I go to Atlantis Hardware Control, this is hardware environment notch filtering. This is inside of the Atlantis, not at the PC level. How did you just get there? Atlantis Hardware Control up to the top of data channels. Okay? Right. It's USB powered, so it's got to address, address that right off the bat. Is that, now, is that redundant? If you have it's not redundant. It's different. The reason it's different is the 60 hertz hardware is a very <laughs> sharp, right at 60. Every USB device that's doing EEG or this kind of recording has a hardware notch. The software notch has to do with all the external stuff that you're dealing with. This has to do with kind of its own noise from powering from the PC. So you want to lay that off. Yeah, that one on 60 isn't bothering anything because it's not filtering anything down the spectrum. It's only a sharp spike at 60. So if your Atlantis is too close to the laptop, can you click the 60? The software, software one? Mm -hmm. will it will, but I would suggest simply moving it first. Don't use it as a crutch because it will affect your numbers. And I'll show you that when we get to the training screen, how you see it dampen the amplitude all the way down the spectrum with the software notch. Okay. Now, looking at this real quick, I usually don't even go in here because this is kind of something that we usually are going to do with you on the phone. But let's take a quick glance. Hardware emulation mode. Atlantis's come stock running as a 2EW in emulation. We have full Atlantis is you know up going fully um, available all the features are, are available it's then running the 24-bit data it's then going down to DC or true 0, 0.0 which also gives you the capability of going from 0 0.001 for some of this low frequency training that's that's going on out there to do that and do it well you want to be in full Atlantis okay to to be in full Atlantis, and don't just kind of listen here for a second, don't worry about it for a second. To be in full Atlantis, it requires what's called a firmware upgrade, okay? The good thing is, is it 95% of the time can be done remotely. Do we want you to try to attempt to do it? No, we don't, okay? And we'll get to a notice that we say, important notice, only do this if instructed by BrainMaster Technology because it's a simple procedure. However, if you do it out of sequence, you can leave the unit unusable. And then it's got to be sent in to be fixed, and you're going to be upset. We're going to feel bad that you're upset, but there's not a lot we're going to be, be able to do about it because you didn't follow instructions. Okay? So. We might have said it to EW wide band. That's and everybody's has said it that. Okay. Uh, when it leaves the factory, I guess okay. you could say. To go to full Atlantis, we walk you through about a five-minute procedure on the phone. And when okay. would I need that? If you want to do slow cortical potential work or you want to do low um, frequency training below a half a hertz. So if you want to reward from 0 .001 to 0 .003, you need full Atlantis. If you're not doing any of that type of work, it, you don't need it. Yeah, Othmer's work at this point, or DC work or slow cortical potential work. You need full Atlantis. Okay? But again, you call us, we'll walk you through it. Once you go full Atlantis, you'd also click the um, below half a hertz link. And if you were doing full Atlantis for somebody and then you went back to what we normally do, you'd have to switch back to the wide band? Or once you go to full Atlantis and you change the firmware, I wouldn't recommend switching back. There's no reason to switch back. Okay. Your capabilities actually expand. Because there, it does increase your what you're going to read down at the lower frequencies. Instead of having a cutoff at a half a hertz, you're going to have things happening below a half a hertz. So you've got to keep in mind that your delta numbers are probably going to be higher. It's much more sensitive. You're looking at 24-bit data now. 
No, the Z-score doesn't really get affected because the bands that are being trained aren't that low. Thatcher, I can't remember what he stops um, Delta at, but I want to say it's 1, maybe. It's 1 hertz. He doesn't even go below a hertz. So I have to look. It's only if you're training in those low frequencies does it matter. Okay. So let's go ahead and hit OK. Now, before we jump to this next section, we're going to go ahead and take a break here. Before we take a break, does anybody have any other questions? And then we're going to move into looking at an important screen, especially for this weekend, which is the electrodes and trainee info. It's, it's a screen that has to be filled out correctly to get what you're looking for. 